Hi, this is the fifth section of the ProtoPy course and today we're going to learn about conditions and toggle. So we have this animation right here where we go to the menu and then we move everything one by one using delay and then we toggle back to where it was using condition. So we have two conditions, one is open and the second one is close and we're using the X position of card one to determine if it's true or false. So now we start with the begin template and it's simply the home page. Now, as I mentioned before, it's very, very important to organize your layers properly. So the way that I want to animate this is to move this first and then second and then third. So it's gonna move from left to right when I click on the avatar. So I'm organizing it that way. So card one, card two, card three, and then this one is gonna move first, second, and third. And then chart, one, two, three, and then one, and then two. So the first thing is we're going to select the avatar, add a trigger, put tap. And then we're going to start our first animation, which is the card one. Click plus, move. And in this case, we're gonna move by 300 pixel. Now, if I click here, you see that it's going to the position that I want. I can also use move to if I know exactly what the position is, but move by is usually easier when it comes to translating to code, because if you do it in CSS, it's going to use transform and then you're going to move it by a certain margin, a certain offset. And then the same with Swift UI or Swift or any other programming languages. Another thing is when you do move to, you have to know exactly what the position is and it's very hard coded and that tends to be less flexible, less adaptive and harder to code. So I'm going to use move by and move on to the rest. So let's click the second card and do the same move the third move and all of them set move by 300 and I can set to spring I can play with the values in this case I'm gonna set to tension 200 friction 20 and it's gonna look like this but I prefer to use some delay so as I mentioned before we're gonna do shift right arrow shift right arrow twice so now it looks like this but every time that I tap it keeps moving by 300 so what I need to do is to set that condition for the first condition let's click on plus and click on condition and here I can sort of like tell what is the variables for my condition and in this case I want to detect the state of my animation so for example I want to click on card one and detecting the X position and if that position is 16 which is as you can see here when you click on card one you can see the values for the position it says 16 if it is 16 then we're gonna say that this is the condition open so I double click here to name the condition just so that I don't get lost when I create more conditions and then I move all of those animations and I put that under this condition. So let's test it. Um, I'm going to click here. It works. Click it again and it stops working because it does not fulfill the condition from here. So because the exposition of this card is no longer 16 then it will not fulfill the condition in order to animate. I can also set a new condition. So here it says X of card one is equal to none. I can set it to 16, but instead of using the equal sign, I'm going to do not equal to. So it's kind of like the opposite of this one. And this one I'm gonna name close then I'm going to reset the positions so card one click on reset card two reset card three reset 
and for all of them I'm going to set to spring using the same values for the spring and then set the way that I want to reverse the animation so in this case I'm going to start 0.2 for the first one and 0.1 for the second one so the card 2 and card 3 now at 0 so what you're gonna see is it's going to open and it's gonna come back but when it comes back the third card moves first and then the second card and then the third card so that's how you do toggling with conditions now we're gonna move on to the rest we're gonna click on add and then plus right here move and I'm gonna do all of them at the same time then I'm gonna do the same with reset so add and then reset perfect now I can just select all of them at the same time set spring and set my animation parameters like this and the same for reset perfect for the move most of them is going to be moved by 300 so let's test this I'm clicking here and everything is moving at the same time but also the avatar and we can still see uh, the search icon which is not good so what we're gonna do is fix those things starting with the search icon I'm going to move so by the way when you click on the search icon you see all the responses that are affecting this layer so in this case this is the move that is affecting it and I can just push it more so 400 for example and so that's going to fix my search icon but also for the avatar I have to check in sketch what is the distance from the left that this avatar is going to be when the menu is open so you can see it's 28 now I'm gonna go back and click on avatar click on this animation and it's going to move to because I know the position it's going to be 28 cool so if I test this it's simply going to move here and now I just need to make the other screen appear in the background let's go to the second scene where we have the menu uh, make sure that we don't have the right elements and we can just select all the layers and when you do it should select everything so that we have this frame for the whole screen and we can just command G to group that and when you do that you have a container including everything I'm gonna call this one menu and I can just command C to copy go back to the first screen and then put that at the bottom but this part I already did that for you so I actually made sure to set the opacity to zero so that we don't see the menu by default for the menu instead of setting a move animation we should actually set a opacity animation so I just deleted that one and I'm gonna set opacity I'm going to set that to 100 when I open it and then reset just the way it was so let's test it I'm gonna click right here and you can see that apart from the timing everything just works we see the menu but the timing is a little bit off so we're gonna do our delay so that we have a really nice transition that fits what we did for the cards so I'm gonna go and click on add so this is where I started and I'm gonna do the same thing using the same delays so shift right arrow for this one so the um, the icon and for the avatar two times let's do the same for the transactions I'm gonna go to chart and then balance do and the same for the transactions but this time we have two items so I'm just gonna move it once 
finally, you want your new scene to appear right after the animation is over. And roughly when the animation is over is after point two, so roughly at point three, it's when we can start showing the second scene. So I'm going to move this to point three instead. So now if I test this, you can see that once the animation is over, then this menu appears. Now I'm going to reverse the animation, starting with the add. But instead of this being animated first, it's going to be animated last, like this. Let's move on to chart. And then transactions. And that's it. Now we should have exactly the animation that we want. So everything is transitioning properly to the menu screen. But on top of that, we have a very organic animation that is sequenced with delay and using spring. I hope you enjoyed learning how to create a toggle with conditions and how to create a more complex sequence animation that transitions to a new scene. In the next session, we're going to learn how to do more of that screen transition and at the same time jump to another screen entirely and separate the interactions so that you don't have everything inside a single scene. Thank you for sticking around. I hope to see you in the next session.